So today I just want to do a quick sort of walk around tour of my apple breeding project and kind of the different parts of it around the different parts of the land. And I just wanted to start here because this is the original Franken tree, which is kind of where it all started. This was a rootstock sucker and it just made sour green apples when I moved here like nine years ago or whatever. And I just started grafting tons of different stuff onto it and kind of went crazy and now it has probably 140 or 150 varieties of apples but getting to taste all these different apples and how many different flavors there were and stuff like that i got excited about uh, apple breeding and i also was exposed to albert edder's work he was um, a plant breeder in northern california around early in the last century so he bred wicks and catherine waltana pink pearl and a lot of he was working on a lot of red fleshed apples and reading about his successes and how relatively easy he thought it was um, really encouraged me along that path so I sort of just you know jumped into it. So I have apples all over the property but uh, this is a pl another place where I have a concentration of apples of more interest to me. Stuff mostly that I did a lot of research to find to try to figure out what you know might do well here or the kind of had the kind of traits I was interested like late keeping or you know just outstanding flavor so these are diagonal cordon or oblique cordon apples um, they're trained to a, a simple trellis as you can see they grow at around a 45 degree angle they pretty much are just one continuous stem with shoots growing off but sometime you know during the summer I cut everything back to keep them kind of as growing as a column. So they're on 18 inch centers, uh, one over 18 inches, and most of these have been grafted to two varieties. So there's one variety on the bottom and then about halfway up I added a second variety. I have probably three varieties out of here that I've ended up using as parents in breeding. I planted a row of rootstocks here and what happens is each year when the stocks are harvested, all of these shoots are cut away and they have little roots on them. And then as they sprout in the spring, I put these bottomless pots on them and fill those with sawdust as the plants grow up. So they can grow new roots and I cut the shoots off again with the roots and those become the rootstocks that I use. And that just kind of goes on year after year after year. You can cut down the whole plant. And this is how commercial rootstocks are mostly grown. Here are the fruits that we pollinated in the uh, pollination segment video. And not all of these. I think we did this one here, this one here. This one had, I cut, accidentally cut one of the flowers sort of in half. And that's the only one that failed out of all the different ones that we pollinated in that video here. And I think we did this one too. So anyway, when these get just a little bit bigger, I will write the, the name of the cross on it so I know exactly what the cross is in case the apple ever falls off. And then put on um, like a piece of nylon stocking or a paper bag or something to protect the fruit from birds. These are last year's seedlings and uh, they're kind of in this neglected corner of the garden because I don't really need this space right now. And also because if a tree dies out in the main plot out there where you know they, the seedlings are growing out to fruit, I can replace it because each of these has um, a unique tag and that corresponds to one out in the field, so I could always grab a new scion from this if I lose one. Um, however, I've never lost one so far, so, so far so good. And these are this year's seedlings. They are a little rough looking because, um, well, whenever I plant them out from the greenhouse, they always get sunburned and uh, all the old leaves, you know, look pretty scorched and so, it sets them back, but they still have a long season ahead of them. This one has uh, five inches on it already. And also I planted them out too late, which I always do. These guys will grow out for the rest of this season. Next spring slash late winter probably, I will cut them off, graft them onto a dwarfing rootstock, and then plant them in the field. So this is actually a seedling that I planted but it was open pollinated, so I only know what one parent is, and that's Wixen, which is an outstanding apple. I've used it as a parent elsewhere and will continue to. It's hard to imagine an apple grown from a Wixen seed that would actually not be great because the apple is just so good. But who knows what's possible? Maybe it will turn, it'll just be some sour, mealy thing. 
So that's pretty exciting. As you can see, this branch is quite large. It um, is as big as the main tree, and that's because I let it grow freely because that's what apparently what you're supposed to do to get fruit quicker is just let them grow like crazy. In fact, I've cut this back really hard this year. As soon as it started fruiting, I cut it way back. So I took a lot of stuff off. Actually, it was much bigger than this. So this is a variety called maypole. It's a red fleshed crab apple and it's for a crab apple it's fairly edible you can see the birds are already starting to peck on these too so each of these orange tags is a pollination that i made i used parents like chestnut crab and wixen and i don't recall what else and um, i just wanted to get some of these genes in the other interesting thing about this tree is that it's a spire or columnar tree, so it doesn't really branch out and grow to the sides much. As you can see, it's sort of staying compact, and it will stay that way. So the whole tree will be, you know, a couple feet in diameter is all the space it'll take up, and it'll be short, you know, maybe like eight to 12 feet or something like that when it's mature. This is the row where those apple seedlings from this year I just showed you will go. And right now I'm just using the space to grow onions to sell on eBay, which kind of helps pay for all my projects and uh, buying rootstock for this project when I need to. These are last year's seedlings here, and as you can see, I'm also growing onions there. So by next year, these will be too big to grow onions next to. So I'm just kind of uh, taking advantage of this while I can, and uh, that works out really good. It's a great system, actually. It, it makes me, since I'm taking good care of the onions and feeding them and watering them all the time, the trees really benefit more than they probably would suffer from the competition. And uh, of course, if I didn't plant the onions and took just as good a care of the trees, maybe they would grow faster. But reality is I may not get around to watering them quite so often or feeding them as much because, you know, the onions really, the onions really have to stay wet and well fed or they're just not going to do well. And as you can see, they're doing quite well. So anyway, these guys are doing good. As you can see here, I've got some disease issues. This has scab and mildew. And, you know, I think in a large breeding program, basically these are usually screened. So... They'll actually take the seedlings, expose them to these diseases, and then if they seem susceptible, they're thrown out right away and not planted. But hey, I'm just way too curious to see what comes out of these things. I mean, I'm so curious. I mean, what's this? what if this is like just a really interesting apple? And, you know, if, it, if it's really disease susceptible, it may not be growable. But at this point, the information about what the fruit is going to be like is just really worth a lot to me. So I'm going to just keep growing everything out for now and uh, kind of see what happens. But I think in the future, it probably would pay to grow more seedlings and call out more of the, uh, the ones that seem disease prone right away. Now these up here are my oldest trees and I think they're about four years old. I'm hoping that means I'm going to get some fruit pretty soon. When they grow from a seed, they're in a kind of a juvenile phase, you know, like a kid or something. And it, there has to be like a certain, certain changes for them to switch over and become sexually mature. And some people say that has to do with, you know, how many buds are on the plant. Um, I don't know what it is for sure or how to trick them. You know, I know that there's ways to trick them and they do it in large breeding programs where they trick the tree into thinking it's grown for, you know, years when it's only grown for one year. Maybe by manipulating light or temperature, or really pushing them hard at certain points and cutting them off at other points, stuff like that. So, you know, that's kind of all beyond me at this point. I may mess with it someday or try some experiments at some point, but for now, I'm content to just plant these and let them grow. It's hard enough to uh, take care of them. As you can see, they're sort of falling over and kind of ratty looking, and that's because they should be trellised. And eventually when they start fruiting, more of them may start to fall over, blow over in the wind, break off, stuff like that. So that's on the list is putting these on a trellis. As you can see, I have disease problems here too. Very bad mildew on this one. Scab on a lot of them. And uh, again, just too curious, too curious to rip them out. 
This one's pretty bad. It's got, you know, yellow edged leaves. It's got mildew. Doesn't seem to have too much scab. And it's small, you know, it's really stunted. So it's also hemmed in by these other two plants. And that one I'm kind of tempted to pull out, but I might as well just leave it and see what happens. Again, just too curious about what the fruit's gonna be like. I'm really hoping, but not, you know, obsessively, <laughs> that these will produce some fruit this next season and I'll actually get to taste some fruits of all this labor and time and investment. Because every one of these is a seedling from an apple that I hand pollinated. And, you know, I chose the parents for certain reasons. And um, it's going to be exciting to find out what comes out of here. So I think that's about it for now. I know it doesn't look very glamorous, but uh, I think there's great potential held within this small group of plants to make something interesting. And whether I'll make an apple that's really worth other people propagating and growing, you know, who knows? I just have no idea, really. I think there's a, a reasonable chance of that. Um, I don't think there's much chance that I'll ever make a variety that's commercially viable, but that's okay too. And uh, that's not really what I'm shooting for. So, what is this? Well, look at that. Those are flowers, you guys. Can you see that? Look at that. Here we go. I'll be darned. The timing is way off. I mean, it's uh, it's June here. It's actually close to the end of June, 20, uh, 24th or something. But that is seriously encouraging because that means this will probably bloom next year. Um, damn, I am half tempted to come out here with a little bit of pollen, which I have, you know, saved from my, my earlier breeding and just dab a little on there just in case they might uh, form some fruits. This one's actually quite interesting too because Look here, it has very red stems. You see how red those stems are? And also here on the petiole, there's quite a bit of red there too. Can you see that? The red pigmentation here is encouraging because all of these, everything planted in all these rows I showed you so far, all have one parent that's red fleshed. So that's kind of my main that's been really my main focus is red fleshed apples at this point. So my camera overheated because it's like 85 degrees out here. We're in the middle of a heat wave. I think I was just saying that all of these have a red fleshed parent and that's kind of been a main goal of mine. I'm going to talk more about that in a segment in the fall. I think I'm just going to wait till the fall where I actually have some apples to show you uh, some of the parents that I've been using. How cool that I caught that uh, first blossom in that sort of candid video moment there. Um, at first I kept looking over at it and I was like, what is that white thing there? It couldn't be a blossom and I thought maybe I accidentally shot it with my pellet rifle and it was just like the wood fibers all splattered out there. But how cool is that? I'm just, I'm definitely going to pollinate that with some, po I'm going to grab some pollen and uh, tickle that thing because uh, why not, right? It kind of looks like something just ate all of the uh, petals off. But who knows, maybe it'll set some fruit and uh, Sure, it won't amount to much this year, being so late, but dude, why not? Right? All right.